Hey guys, Derek and Bella here from Back to Reality. And as many of you already know, we've had a pretty rough summer, so we haven't had a whole lot of time for our garden or documenting any of our progress with it. But now that things are finally starting to slow down a little bit, we figured we'd take the opportunity to give you guys some updates. So for today, we're going to show you all the changes we've been making in our garlic bed. But before we show you exactly what we're doing, let's give you a quick reminder of where we're doing it. By now, you guys should be pretty familiar with our overall garden layout. There's the main fenced-in section where we've been experimenting with hugel culture mounds, back to Eden, and of course the Ruth Stout method. And then there's outside the fence, where we built our first garlic bed by spreading out a layer of cardboard, adding rows of compost, and covering them with spoiled hay after planting. That bed turned out really well and produced about 260 bulbs. In fact, it turned out so well that we decided to expand our garlic crop to a couple thousand plants over two years, in hopes of eventually growing enough to sell. But unfortunately, after scaling up the dimensions, we quickly realized that we didn't have enough compost to cover that much space. Sure, we could have just purchased some ready-made compost, but we've been trying so hard to build our own soil over the past few years that bringing in a truckload just seemed like cheating. And besides, Paula's always saying how she just loves digging things by hand, and we could certainly use the exercise. So eventually, I came up with another option. What? During some of our other experiments, we've discovered that we already have a decent amount of topsoil. But unfortunately, it's buried under all of this grass. If only we could simply flip the sod upside down to expose the soil underneath and let the vegetation decompose, eventually releasing even more nutrients back into the garden. But we also want raised beds, because garlic plants hate having wet feet. So simply flipping the sod won't work. But that's when it hit me. What if we just shifted everything one row to the right? You see, by digging up the top 8 inches of sod, flipping it over, and then shifting it, we would create an 8 inch deep trench next to an 8 inch tall mound. So when combined, we would actually be left with 16 inch tall raised beds, nearly double the topsoil and a built in layer of compost to boot. Now, if we have an overly wet season, the mounds would keep the garlic well above the saturation line. And alternatively, if the season is overly dry, the trenches would act like mini swales, collecting rainfall and concentrating it right where the garlic needs it most. So last fall, we dug the first five rows, planted the garlic, covered it all with a thick layer of hay for winter, and eventually harvested our crop a few weeks ago. And now we're in the middle of digging the next five. So come on, let's show you our process. First of all, we start by measuring and marking the row. In our case, each of our trenches and mounds are 2 feet wide and 50 feet long. And we found that it helps to use a string as a guide for the edges. Next, I use a lawn edger to cut the outlines while Paula watches. It would of course be faster if we both cut the outlines together, but unfortunately the edger requires a bit of body weight to do the cutting. And as you can see, Paula just doesn't have what it takes. Oh, and as a quick side note, back when we were living in our camper van, we discovered that she had the same problem while trying to help me use the bumper jack. Anyway, once the outlines are complete, I begin cutting small sections of sod in the trench. The width of these sections is up to you, but we've found that roughly 10 inches seems to work pretty well. Essentially, you want them to be small enough to make for easy flipping, but large enough to ensure that you're not flipping all day. After I've cut the first few sections, Paula gets to work at digging them out and flipping them over. Once I hit the far end, I begin flipping the sod from the other direction. Eventually, we meet in the middle, and after some light cleanup work, we're done. With this process and at a comfortable pace, we can complete one of these rows in about an hour. So if we do one every day or two, we can have all five complete in about a week. So last year, after digging the first five rows, we simply left them exposed until it was time to plant. But this year, as you can see behind me, we're also experimenting with cover crops of buckwheat and white Dutch clover. But we'll tell you all about that in another video. Because right now, I'm sure you're probably curious about how this all worked out for us last season. Well, all of the plants grew, we harvested a pile of scapes, and eventually ended up with about a thousand garlic bulbs hanging in our dry shed. So I'd say it worked out pretty well. Weeds were a bit of an issue on the edges, but I'm hoping that the cover crops and some more strategically placed mulch will help with that. And if we look under the mounds, the old grass is fully decomposed, and as usual, there are earthworms everywhere. Oh, and we'll be planting our next crop of garlic in a few weeks, so we'll show you that process soon. 
But in the meantime, we're taking a break from all the digging because last year's garlic is finally dry and ready to be cleaned. So we better get on it. See you guys next time.